The story I'm going to tell you is based on a, a real life person, Owen McNeill, who grew up in Glenarm. But this story is my interpretation of an incident that might have happened to a young boy at that time. When he looked back, Owen could see the wide range of trees, the oak, ash, birch and elder, whose roots intertwined and ran down through the glen towards the sea. Above, in the blue sky, white puffy clouds were scudding across, buffeted by the light easterly breeze. Owen was engaged in his favourite pastime, roaming through the glen. He loved the freedom of and the quiet, the chance to ponder life. But sometimes he was kept back by the hefty list of chores that his mother would leave out for him. Owen's mother was one of those strict Catholic women who find it difficult to shower affection on her children, but instead showed her love by placing a, a hefty country dinner on the table each evening. Owen was third in the sibling ladder. Bridget, then Mary, then Owen, James, Eugene and the baby little Teresa, who was still suckling at her mother's breast. Owen had shown great aptitude for his schoolwork at the village school in Glenarm and it was his father's fervent wish that he would go on to study at St Malachy's College in Belfast. But for now, Owen could content himself and when he had a free day, take his pleasure roaming through the glen. As he broke through a bracken hedge, Owen stopped suddenly in his tracks because there, in the clearing in front of him, was a doe and her foe. She was munching on the lush green grass. She was tawny with darker spots on her sides and shoulders. And even more astoundingly, the foal was nuzzling her haunch, trying to release the, the milk that would flow from a suckled teat. Owen was afraid to move even a fraction of an inch in case he would break the spell. But suddenly, a shot was fired in the distance. The doe's neck shot up. She turned round and took off through the bracken as fast as she could go with a foal behind her. Owen knew that it was a hunting party, licensed from Lord Antrim's estate, and immediately he knew what he had to do. Although he wasn't as fleet of foot as the doe, he could run pretty fast. All his roaming in the glen had made him very fit, and he was able to keep her in his sights as he ran. And then he realised that the deer had stopped. Huntsmen on horseback had paid boys pennies to run round the back of the doe and her foal with a, a barbed wire fence. She was imprisoned. But Owen knew that not on everything were the gentry superior. Because although they thought they were on castle grounds, he knew that the land they stood on was in fact belonging to his family, handed down through the generations from father to son. Immediately, Owen took off. He ran as fast as he could through the forest, through the gates and past St Patrick's Church of Ireland, over the bridge, through the village and in through the McNeil kitchen door, the half door on the McNeil kitchen household. There was his mother, baking soda bread. She couldn't believe as the whirlwind rushed past her what was happening. Where are you going? He didn't wait to answer. He went straight through to the little study at the back of the house where Archibald McNeil, Owen's father, was attending to his accounts. Father, father, there's a doe on her phone. Uh, uh, they're imprisoned on our land. I think they're going to shoot it. Please come quick. Archibald looked over the top of his horn-rimmed glasses. He could see the pent-up distress in the heart of his young son. Carefully but surely, he set the quill back in the inkwell. He took off his glasses and set them on the desk, got to his feet and walked through the kitchen, ignoring his wife's query as to where he was going. He lifted his coat from the latch and put it on and out the door into the yard where Bess the mare was tethered and bridled from earlier. Archibald lifted Owen up onto the front of the horse and mounted it. They trotted through the village, over the bridge and through the gates of the castle grounds. Then he nudged the horse into a canter and didn't stop until they reached the point where the doe and her foal were standing. 
By this time, the doe had caught one of her haunches on a barb on the fence and was bleeding. Archibald dismounted. You do realise that you are trespassing? N no, no, we, we thought we were on castle grounds. We're a licensed hunting party for Lord Antrim. Well, I must correct you in your mistake, sir. And now I would be grateful if you would remove yourself and your colleagues from my land. The confidence with which Archibald spoke convinced the huntsmen, but they were sorely disappointed. They had been looking forward to a venison dinner after the deer had been hung for the required length of time, cooked by the castle cook and wine simmered from Spanish grapes and savoured with herbs from the castle guard. Now they would have to settle for rabbit stew. They retreated shamefully. Meanwhile, Archibald and Owen rolled up the barbed wire fence behind the deer and her foal. When she saw that her way was clear, she set off limping through the forest. But Archie knew that it was not a serious injury and that she would be fine. Owen looked up at his father, full of admiration. Oh, father, thank you so much. They would not have survived but for you. It was nothing, son. I'm glad you called me. Archie lifted Owen up onto the horse. He mounted and turned Bess's head for home. Thank you.